I'm Ashley Harwood. I am a professional wood turner, and this is my other office. For those of y'all who are new to my channel, firstly, welcome. And secondly, I thought it was worth reiterating that one of my goals with this channel is to show what it's like to run a business and to live life as a craftsperson. How do you get started? What is it like in the early days? What kind of drive does it take? And what can it evolve into? I believe that there are so many people that have this idea in the back of their mind or a dream. So I think these questions are super important. And there's no roadmap for living this kind of lifestyle, only the stories and testimonials of those people who have and are living it. In this video, part two of my visit to Joy Brigham's workshop in California, I had the unique opportunity to sit down with Jory and his wife, Allie, to learn about not only what it's like to run and grow a successful woodworking business and educational facility, but also about what it's like to raise a family alongside it. I also talk with Tyler, who has been working at Jory's workshop and helping him to teach classes for three years so far. And I finished the bench that I began working on in part one while attending a class at Jory's workshop. If you missed part one, there's also some great interviews with Jory himself and Jeff and Jason, two metal fabricators who are teaching the welding portion of the course. Don't forget to check out the links down below this video to learn more about Jory and Tyler and the workshops they offer, to check out my new line of turning tools and all kinds of other fun stuff. After a brief message about this video's sponsor, we'll get right into it. I hope y'all enjoy. I would like to thank Cometeer for sponsoring this video. Cometeer offers a completely new way to make or melt your morning coffee. The problem I find with making the first cup of coffee in the morning is that I haven't yet had my first cup of coffee in the morning. Cometeer makes it super easy to have a high quality cup of coffee without all of the fussy mess first thing in the morning. Cometeer isn't like other coffee. Cometeer is barista quality coffee brewed better through science and flash frozen to lock in flavor and freshness. All you have to do is pour eight ounces of hot water on top of the contents of one of the frozen capsules and voila. Cometeer partners with the best regional specialty coffee roasters. The flavor is deliciously rich and super fresh. For an iced latte, pour the melted contents of the capsule over your iced milk. I really appreciate their dedication to sustainability. All of the packaging that the coffee comes in is completely recyclable, down to the individual aluminum capsules. For a limited time, Cometeer is offering $20 off your first order, and there's always free shipping. That's 10 free capsules. Just click on the link down below my video to claim your offer. At the end of the second day of class, I put the finish on the wooden portion of my bench. We used Festool Surfix finish. I put on a generous amount and let it soak into the wood. You may also remember from the end of the first video, some of us chose to put a patina finish on the metal parts. This was an overnight process. We had to wait until the next morning to see what it would look like. And man, did it turn out cool. Mine looked like fingernail marks. I scuffed the first coat of finish on my bench after it set in overnight to prepare for the second coat. My bench top needs a bit of finessing to get the metal parts fitting snug. I use a sander to shape the tenons on the legs to fit into the metal brackets that I welded on the second day. This is a trial and error kind of process. 
Take off a little, check the fit, and repeat until it's just right. No. no not yet. Not yet. <laughs> There's a change in the sound once the tenon is in completely. It's almost there. Making sure I don't have any smuts. Okay. All right. So Tyler, what's your story? Yeah, so I've been working with Jory for about three and a half years, and we've taught about a million of these courses, which has just been the That's best. And it's Murphy's Law up here, so everything that can go wrong has gone wrong, and so it's made me a much right. better woodworker because we're kind of constantly on our toes and learning right. from all of our mistakes. That's, that's so much about, I think, being a craftsperson is learning how to solve all the problems. Like when things don't go right, then what do you do? Well, there's just a fix for everything. When we get some people in here that are anxious and nervous and maybe have a little less experience, the go-to conversation I have with them is that, you know what, there's a fix for everything. And if you had to boil down woodworking, for me, it's been really just the accumulation of ways to get out of mistakes. Because even though we do this all day, every day, wood moves, it's organic, things happen, glue makes everything crazy, right. and eventually you're gonna come across a problem that you've never had before, but your tool belt feels full of all of the abilities to get out of it, and so that's, that's the go-to conversation I like to have to calm people down that are feeling a little anxious. Tell me a bit about your background. Um, you were saying that, that you went to the Krenov School? Yeah, so I went to the Krenov School. Um, it's definitely a different world than here. It's all hand tools. It's up in Northern California. In nine months, you make two projects. Mm -hmm. And here, we make eight benches in two and a half days. It, was, it felt, for me, like this really great way to learn kind of the most difficult way to do something that now <laughs> I can try and make some money at right. and do a little bit more production right. of. Um, and it was awesome. It was like the most romantic way to make furniture. You, you the area it's, was it's beautiful. more romantic than this? It's all touching the wood and like making your own tools that then you make furniture with the tools you created, like making hand planes and chisels. And so it felt very romantic in a way. I guess what I mean by that is, I don't think you could really make money making furniture that way most of the time. Right. Um, but you, I get to incorporate it all the time and Jory has such a different background. It's cool that we balance each other out and we see different solutions to the same problem. And, and it's been just great so far. So how did you end up working for Jory? So I was living in Georgia and packed up an RV with my wife and all our entourage of pets. Mm -hmm. And we uh, took a tour across the country and just randomly ended up in the Central Coast. And she was like, hey, I think we're near that woodworker you're always watching YouTube videos of. And he was the first person that I ever saw a YouTube video of making furniture about 11 years ago that I was like, one day I want to be able to do that. And he's yeah. doing this hand carving, like this thing back here. Uh -huh. And I was like, that is so cool. He was making the back of a bed. I was like, mm -hmm. let's do that one day. And a decade goes by and I'm like, I think I want to go to woodworking school. She tells me we are near where he lives. And I just called him up and I was like, hey, I'm going to woodworking school. Can I pop in? And he and his two kids were cleaning the shop that day. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of a perfect moment to be able to just come in and chat, say, hey, I'm going to school, I'm going to be there for a year, I'll be a little better in a year and hungry for a job, maybe we can stay in touch. And and then I think I, I really sealed the deal by I hand wrote him a letter, which as an artist, he ate that up. And I didn't know that right. or anything, but he just loved that I took the time to hand write him a letter. So one of the things that we asked Jory, mm -hmm. and I'd like to get your opinion on it too, is like, do you have any advice for somebody who's wanting to get into woodworking, who's wanting to make a career out of it? What would your advice be? Well, so mine is probably really different than Jory's. I have really benefited from working with like the master, you know, he, I learned so much and, and I've been, it's been so great that I've been able to teach. And, and to me, teaching has actually taught me the most um, because to me, it's like, if you can do it, then you're already good. But if, if you have to be able to teach it, you have to not only be able to do it, you have to think about all of the ways in which to describe it because everyone learns differently you know there's all the different styles of learning and so you have to be able to 
tell someone how to do it in five different ways, get all of the mistakes fixed and everything. And so teaching has been really good for me or at least being able to describe how to do something. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, it's just a practice thing. If you don't have the time for it, it might be really tricky. So make the time. Make the time, make it a priority. Yeah, that's, right. that's gotta be there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Tyler. Absolutely, thanks for talking with me. And thank you for helping me in this class. Absolutely, it's <laughs> been my pleasure. Once I've got the pieces fitting snug, it's time to bolt the metal brackets onto the wooden bench top. The two back legs are cut with a track saw to make them sit flat. The front legs remain squared off as an element of the design. It's one of those can't put it back on type of moments. It's a pretty incredible thing to watch eight beautiful benches come together in two and a half days. Many of us had little to no experience in welding or in this type of woodworking. Our teachers were extremely patient, but also fun and encouraging. I spent some time with Jason and Jeff brainstorming about different things I can make with my new welding skills. I love the process of learning new skills and of having so many design opportunities open up with an expanded repertoire. And then I spent some time with Jory and Allie to learn more about how they met and what life is like for them with this kind of business. Jory was saying that he really, he didn't have a lot of money. And True. He, he was living in the shop. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, what was that like? Um, he was just so hot, I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was actually, I think I told you, I was actually uh, showering behind a dumpster right. with a hose. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was, that Obviously was... my standards weren't very high. Um, yeah, I, I mean. My standards weren't very high. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a an interesting like looking back on all of it. Yeah, yeah, of course it was difficult and definitely like ups and downs, feast and famine, and I think which is territory when you run your own business. Period. Right. right? And it's still ups and downs and long hours and and you have all these wood people at your house all the time. Yeah. Wood Do. people, Wood they're people. the worst. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think in regards to that, we've met such incredible people. Mm -hmm. And so even though it's exhausting, mm -hmm. and for me, it takes a good day or two to recoup after these, right. I wouldn't trade it because of the people. You know, I, it's, it's definitely, you know, they say opposites attract. We're very opposite in a lot of ways. Definitely have a different perspective on a lot of things, and it's good because I think, you know, we ground each other in certain ways. When we first met, I, I think I was working a lot, and mm -hmm. so I definitely had that conversation with her that, hey, this is this is my objective in life. This is what I want to do, and but along the way, we've definitely gone through those, those hard times have for sure made us fast track into learning about each other a little mm -hmm. bit more, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, that's a ongoing, never ending process. I work a lot. Yeah. And uh, I think that's, that's for sure difficult. Right. Yeah. And we talked about it last night. Initially yeah. it was yeah. very much like his work was, was the mistress. Like he was gone all the time and yep. not present mm -hmm. sometimes because of his creative brain right. being on yep. often. Um, but, I think that as our relationship has progressed and as I've gotten older, recognizing that that is his process right. and that's where we are. Mm -hmm. And you get to choose to be upset with it or be grateful for it, right. you know? And there's obviously there's times when it's, when it's tougher than others, yeah. but um, I would say overall, the, the beauty that comes out of it, I'm extremely grateful for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do, we're, we're making this work. Yeah. We're, we're running a business together. You are, you know? it's pretty great. A couple businesses. Yeah. So it's funny, like when you're in it, it's, you're in it, but then if you take a, a, you know, a snapshot from an aerial view, you're like, whoa, yeah. we did this, we're doing this. Yeah, I mean, it's right? lots of people, you know, I'm sure lots of the people that come to this class, like look at you guys and where you are now and they're like, 
life is so incredible. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. I want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's like we were talking about before. Like, do you really want to take do all the steps that it takes yeah. to get there? Yeah. Right. Like, here's what it's really like. Mm -hmm. You don't just land here out of nowhere, right? Yeah. The process isn't quite as romantic as the destination. <laughs> you know? Getting um, there sure. isn't quite as romantic as being there, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then it is. You know, but I, I think, I mean, even with our kids being, you know, somewhat involved, I mean, they definitely help out. Um, just, I think it's so important to teach them that what you're really passionate about or what you really want, it, it does take a lot of work. So many of us have um, gotten away from what, you know, for, for one reason or another, mm -hmm. like what we innately are meant to do. Mm -hmm. And to have someone as your partner who has that direction and drive right. and vision, that's really inspiring to mm -hmm. be next to. Mm -hmm. For myself, I'm not good at business. You know, so we know where we want to go, but have absolutely no idea how to get there. So it's, it's really, we're figuring out as we go along. Mm -hmm. And it's a constant, like, right. you know, switching, switching gears, direction yeah. and going here and going there. And This sounds a lot like what you were talking about with your design process, though. Mm -hmm. you, that you want to, you sort of get to a point and you stand back and you're like, mm, do I want to go this way or do I want to go that way? Yeah. And, I, and I think that that's really important, actually. I mean, you say that you're not that good at business, but like that's one of the most important things to be able to do is to be able to pivot. Yeah, mm -hmm. to pivot, to to make those decisions as you need to make them, to not be scared of or unwilling to to change sure. or you know yeah. try a different direction or point. go somewhere that you didn't expect to go in the first place. Right. So how long have y'all been together? Married for almost 15 years and. Mm -hmm what, two years before, two and a half years prior to that, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's quite a while. Wow. A long so, time. <laughs> all right. So for both of you guys, what would you say is like the best part and the worst part of the sort of combination of like the business and the relationship being kind of, being as intertwined as they are, business and family life, you know? Best part is got, um, I don't have to pay my employee. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Free labor. Uh -huh. um, you see these boots and these <laughs> jeans? Do you see that look we're getting over there right now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that what you're sticking with? Uh-huh. Yeah, that has probably changed over the years. I mean, it took us a long time to get to where we're at. And yeah. It's not perfect, but we went through a time when, um, mainly because I, I am so focused and, and specific and picky. Controlling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in that sense, I, I, I am. I mean, you guys tie to the same thing. I am so particular about every little thing, and that's just because it's my baby. You know, I've, I've, I've done it for so long, and she... It's a baby now. It's not a mistress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and, and I'm so... And, and, and I see little things, and she's like, what's the big deal? Just, let's just do this. Let's do it quick. Let's do it. And I'm like, no, we need to slow down. Um, and so there, we went through a time when we just had to kind of figure that out. The tough part is knowing when to disconnect from this, um, you know, to come down there, down to the house. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still so in my head and thinking yeah. about stuff, and she sees that, and she wants me to be, to be present, which, you know, that's not too much to ask. But sometimes I've, if I have a project where it's not worked out yet, and I'm wrestling with it in my head, right. I come down to eat dinner, and I'm still, I can't shake that. It's like the mistress trying trying to work out an idea or trying to yeah and so trying to flush out yeah. yeah and you know and and i know since we do have this business together and it's so intertwined um i think she just gets so sick of it she just wants to like let's step away from it all but there's really nowhere to go right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i think it's witnessing someone who is living out their dream mm -hmm. they they Jory has a laser focus in knowing that this is what he's wanted to do from a pretty young age, I think. Um, it was kind of ingrained in him. And being around someone who, on this planet right now, knows what makes them tick and what they want to contribute to the world, it's really inspiring to see that. Mm -hmm. And knowing that it comes from a place of, um, like just authenticity and truth to right. him. Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't, right. we wouldn't want to be around that, right? Right. So we talked <laughs> about like how like he might be going in a bunch of di different directions mm -hmm. at once. Yeah. Like that's really frustrating. <laughs> <laughs>
There's a so lot of like, projects that are halfway done. Also, I'm so familiar with all of this. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's the other part of it. Like, I don't know that Jory has a real concept of, of time, but it doesn't, that doesn't matter because yeah. he's like so pumped to be doing all these different yeah. things. What is time anyway? This is so funny. <laughs> I, I have literally been told so many times in my life that I have no concept of time. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like from the time I was a little kid. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I'd like to think of it as a different concept of time. Right. You no, know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I look at things as so long term. Uh-huh. You know, and um, I go, okay, well, we'll get to that. That's, there's no rush on that because it needs to be at the right time or maybe you all have learn more or we'll have more budget or whatever it might right. be. So sometimes for me, I sort of see the vision of what I want it to be. Like I see the vision of what I want my house to look like at the end of the day. Right. Or I have a vision of where I want the business to be. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's not there yet, well, you know, whatever, there's time. Right. <laughs> and, it, you know? and and knowing this too, I, I think I think it's different for, for you because it's not really in your control, right? Mm -hmm. It's the right. same thing as letting someone else drive the car, you know, when they're driving and and you're in the passenger seat going, <gasps> and you're driving, you're fine. You're like, I know what I'm doing. I know what we're, you know, where we're going. I think for me, I, it's kind of along the lines of what you say. I see it. I know it's going to get there. It's just got to be the right time. Mm -hmm. And so there's no worry that's not going to get done. I think for you, you're like, when is it going to get done? Mm -hmm. let's, let, let, let's do this now. And so mm -hmm. it's just a difference in perspective. Right, but it's also like living in that chaos mm -hmm. is difficult for me yeah. as well, right? Yeah, I'm familiar with what that. Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> chaos? You want to see chaos? I'll show you chaos. Uh, yeah. Proof that a woodturner can learn some new tricks with excellent instruction, of course. This was a seriously amazing and fun experience, combining all of the best parts of making, learning and making new friends, with the added bonuses of having something beautiful to show for it and spending a few days in a gorgeous landscape. Time to go home. Taking with me some fun memories and new skills and a thankfulness for those who are willing to share their skills, open up their homes, and put it all out there. This has only grown my love of woodworking and the maker community. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I do hope that you'll hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the little notifications bell to make sure that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Also, don't forget to check out all the links down below this video. I would like to give a big thank you to my Patreon members. Your support really goes a long way in helping us to continue to produce high quality videos and photos for all of the social media accounts. Thank you so much. If you would like a behind the scenes look at what's going on in my business, or if you would like a heads up before the general public about when I'm gonna be hosting my next classes, head on over to the Patreon page. Again, the links are down below. And I'd like to give an extra big shout out to my top tier patrons. Charles Saki, Chris Cairns, Dabby Roan, Duke Bloy, Jeffrey Bishop, Jim Tate, John McDevitt, Chris Jones, Randy Owens, Robert Hunt, aka Mr. Bodog, Stephen Roberts, Steve Snyder, Andrew Nidell, Andrew Movius, Patrick Walker, and Richard Swoboda. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next time. Oh, do it one, one, one more time.